Good evening and welcome to the Board is on Project. Today we discuss uh, different issues in regard with uh, bilateral relations between Georgia and the United States. And our guest is uh, Deputy Chief of Mission of the United States to Georgia, Miss Elizabeth Root. Hello. Hello, how are you doing, Igor? Fine, thanks a lot. And how are you doing in this difficult period? As I know, you spent a few weeks in quarantine. How was it? <laughs> well, that's true. I'm fine, uh, and I have not been uh, ill at all. Uh, I was in the United States from the last day of February through the first couple of weeks of March, and it was during that time that the epidemic uh, truly began to spread. Uh, so when I came back to Georgia, the quarantine requirement was in effect, and I spent two weeks at home uh, in uh, self-quarantine, working from home, uh, and enjoying some extra time with my dog, Lucy. Yeah, and the whole period of this uh, quarantine and COVID pandemic in Georgia, uh, how do you see it for you especially? Like, was it tough or was it maybe a bit better than in some other countries? <laughs> uh, of course, it's not easy to have restrictions and we must not underestimate uh, the uh, very great difficulties that the restrictions that were necessary uh, to handle the pandemic uh, have uh, caused for the business community uh, and the society more broadly. It's going to take a long time uh, to recover fully from the economic effects of the pandemic, not only in Georgia, but everywhere. But I would say that the situation in Georgia uh, has been handled very well, and that puts Georgia in a position to be uh, a country uh, in the early, earlier in the stages of recovery than many. Hopefully. Uh, I was going to start this interview with some other topic that we will discuss a few minutes later, but like news and fake news flow dictates its rules. So my first question to you will be, do you personally or your friends and colleagues, Americans in Georgia, work in Luger Lab? And why do you develop a biological weapon there as Russian Foreign Ministry states all the time? Well, I certainly do not work in the Luger Center myself, uh, but I'm glad you asked me about it uh, because in the context of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we have noticed an increase in fake news and disinformation about the Luger Center, which is very unfortunate uh, because anytime there is fake news, uh, it has the potential to cause societal harm. Uh, and when there is fake news disinformation about an important public health facility, uh, then that undermines the ability of public health authorities to deliver an effective response uh, in the case of an infectious disease. Uh, so it's important that people know the truth about the Luger Center and what it really is. Uh, the Luger Center uh, is the home to the Georgian National Centers for Disease Control. And it also houses the US Army Medical Research Directorate Georgia, which is part of the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Uh, and although it was established with United States funds of the Defense Threat Reduction Agency in 2006 and became fully operational in 2013, the Luger Center is now fully owned and operated by the Georgian government. And as I said, it houses uh, the Georgian Public Health Authority, the Georgian National Center for Disease Control. The Luger Center was established precisely to respond to the kind of infectious disease outbreaks that we see now with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and it has provided uh, the Georgian government capacities for uh, state-of-the-art testing for COVID-19, uh, as well as ongoing F, um, capabilities for disease monitoring, coordination, communication to the public about public health, and uh, coordination among the different parts of the Georgian government. So Georgia has been uh, very fortunate to have this facility already in place uh, in times of a global pandemic. Yeah, thanks a lot. I would just uh, repeat maybe once again, we showed Luger, Luger Lab, Luger Center many times in our episodes. 
And for our audiences to understand it better, uh, Luger Lab is controlled by the National Disease Control Center, directed by Mr. Gamkrelidze and Mr. Pate Mnadze. And these people in Georgia, they're heroes who made the situation be what we have, what we see now, as positive as it could be. So it's very important from my point of view to highlight it once again. Could you please tell me, I don't understand, each six months, I don't know, three months, we hear about biological weapon. Why? Uh, well, because one of the tactics of those who are propagating this kind of disinformation is to create fear. And what can be more frightening than the idea of biological weapons being produced. But I have to say again, this is not true. It is fake news. It's not news at all. It is false propaganda. Uh, and uh, the only reason that I can uh, suggest to you uh, why we are seeing it now is that uh, those who are propagating this kind of propaganda are seizing an opportunity a time when people in fact are frightened because of a disease uh, and they're using this opportunity to try to increase that fear, uh, to try to create distrust, mistrust between population and the government and to try to undermine trust and cooperation among countries that should be working together to fight this global pandemic. Thanks a lot. I think it's uh, clear enough, it should be clear enough. Could you please tell me, continuing this issue, uh, do you, would you say that democratic societies uh, failed to counter the spread of the virus when dictatorships uh, succeeded and did much better in prevention of COVID-19 spread? Well, I, I would not say it's true that autocratic governments are uh, showing more effective responses. Uh, they may have the ability to uh, make command decisions very quickly, but in fact, uh, I'll say first, no country is immune uh, to a global pandemic and germs, bacteria, and viruses know no borders. So a global pandemic requires a global response. But what we see is that democracies are best positioned uh, to provide an effective public health response because in a democracy, people are more likely to trust the government, to trust the public health officials because the people have chosen their leaders in a democratic process. And democratic governments are more responsive to the needs of the people. And because democratic governments are governments that share information with the people that is factual and that is reliable because they do not have a need uh, to, uh, to lie to their populations or deceive them. Uh, so again, global pandemics require responses at the local level, the national level, and the international level. They require cooperation, they require honesty, they require transparency, and these are the very things that democratic governments are best designed, best capable of providing, uh, because um, transparency, honesty, openness are the things that are the foundation of democratic values. And when the information that governments provide is truthful, that means it's not the kind of disinformation that undermines the trust of the people and contributes to, to fear, but it's information that enables citizens uh, to play a constructive role in cooperating with public health authorities uh, and into becoming a part of the response, a part of the solution uh, to public health threats. Uh, thank you. Would you say that uh, at the moment, some people say that uh, democratic communities, United States first, of course, uh, cannot solve inner problems. So they ask, how can they help some other countries or their allies? So what I'm interested in, uh, did United States provide any assistance to Georgia during this pandemic, during this uh, last few months? What was the assistance? And uh, which spheres of, I don't know, public health, security, was targeted? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, again, 
uh, that the Georgian government was able to respond very effectively to the COVID-19 pandemic and to respond quickly. Uh, and I would attribute that to a number of factors. Uh, one factor is that decades of U.S. support for Georgia has helped Georgia to build a public health care system that is capable of meeting the needs of the Georgian people. The second factor is, as I mentioned before, the presence of the Luger Center here in Georgia uh, gave Georgia the capacity uh, to provide state-of-the-art testing for the COVID-19 virus, provide diagnosis, diagnosis right from the very, very beginning uh, when other countries were still struggling to find that basic testing uh, capability. Uh, and uh, third, I would say because Georgia uh, has uh, very much developed as a democracy, this is a country where the Georgian people did trust the government and did trust the public health authorities and did cooperate with the things that needed to be done as a society to manage the pandemic. Uh, to cooperate with social distancing, to cooperate uh, with the curfews, with the limitations on gatherings. And because they cooperated, um, Georgia is now in a position where it's able to ease those restrictions and make the first steps toward a resumption of normal life, even though we have to remain vigilant. Now, in terms of United States assistance specifically for the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we have provided a great deal. Uh, we have provided personal protective equipment for medical personnel uh, and other uh, workers and officials who are in the front line. In addition to the testing capacity already present at the Luger Center, we have provided uh, 4,000 additional uh, gold standard polymerase chain reaction test kits uh, that were developed by the International Atomic Energy Agency with U.S. funding. We have provided technical assistance through our Centers for Disease uh, Control and Prevention that have assisted with tracking, diagnosis, epidemiology, uh, contact tracing, and so forth in the value of $3 million. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, has provided another $2.7 million in new um, COVID-19 related assistance uh, that has helped in many ways, um, for example, in providing accurate public health information, in reaching uh, the remote regions, in reaching uh, ethnic minority regions with correct information, uh, in helping civil society uh, to contribute to the response, uh, and uh, in helping to communicate that uh, a d disease should not be a reason for discrimination against any ethnic group or class of citizen. Uh, we also expedited the delivery of 27,000 tons of uh, very high quality American wheat, uh, which is going onto the Georgian market and the sale of that wheat uh, first provides a needed commodity here in Georgia, uh, but it also uh, will um, be used, the proceeds of the sales will be used to increase the productivity of the beef and the dairy sector here at a time when that is very much going to be needed. And then finally, I'll say that we are planning to stand by Georgia and provide significant assistance to help with the economic recovery, uh, in addition to uh, the longstanding support that USCID is already providing for a sustainable economic growth and prosperity. That's really a lot, I believe. Yes, very good. And uh, could you please tell me, I, I saw some statements of the embassy during this pandemic, uh, when all of these measures took place, uh, we saw uh, an ending process on Georgian occupation lines, where new way for borderization took place and taking place at the moment. What is the position of the embassy in this regard? And do the embassy have any kind of cooperation with Georgian authorities in this regard? Uh, well, let me first reassert the United States' unwavering, enduring uh, commitment to Georgia's sovereignty and its territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. And repeat again, our call for the Russian Federation to fulfill its obligations under the 2008 ceasefire agreement to withdraw its forces to pre-conflict 
uh, positions uh, to uh, renounce its recognition of the Abkhazia and South Ossetia territories as uh, so-called independent states uh, and to allow humanitarian access, which is so badly needed now, uh, to those very regions. Uh, we have watched with great concern the process of so-called borderization, the um, uh, erection of barriers uh, and uh, other forms of obstacles along the administrative boundary lines to restrict freedom of movement uh, of Georgian citizens um, on either side of the boundary line. And unfortunately, it does appear uh, that there has been an increase in this activity precisely uh, during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic, precisely when um, all actors, all parties should be doing everything possible to reduce tensions uh, so that we can all focus on protecting the health of the populations wherever they are. Uh, and yes, the United States is always in close contact with our partners in the Georgian government about the situation. Uh, and we, uh, of course, participate uh, and support uh, Georgia's territorial integrity through the Geneva International Discussions, which is the only existing uh, forum for international dialogue uh, about uh, the uh, unresolved issues arising from uh, the conflicts in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Uh, of course, um, given uh, the restrictions in travel and other um, limitations that have been brought about on a global scale because of the pandemic, there's a pause in the next round of the Geneva International Discussions, but we expect in due course they will resume, and that is where we will also continue through diplomatic channels uh, to support Georgia. Do you believe such kind of channels are effective in these kind of formats? Uh, well, unfortunately, I have to say we have had many rounds of the Geneva International Discussions and have not yet solved the major problems and have not yet uh, restored uh, Georgia's territorial integrity. However, it is also very important that there be a forum for discussion, uh, that there uh, be mechanisms uh, including the Geneva International Discussions, including the, um, uh, the IPRM's Incident Prevention and Response Mechanism on the ground and the hotline, uh, which serves to uh, pr uh, help prevent tensions on the ground from escalating into something worse, including the presence of the European Union Monitoring Mission, which uh, contributes uh, a very important role to the stability in the region. Uh, are these mechanisms effective? Well, they serve a purpose uh, and they, it's very important that they continue until such time as the larger goal of uh, re restoration of Georgia's territorial integrity is reached. We hear all the time <clears throat> that uh, all activities of the United States in Georgia are some kind connected with Russia and relations between the United States and Russia. Now, during this pandemic, we hear that the United States uh, cannot help, they have their own problems, but you just mentioned lots of uh, different kind of support provided to Georgia. What I'm interested in is this support, including Luger Lab and others, are some kind of uh, uh, tool between, uh, in regard with U.S.-Russia relations, or why United States keep doing it even when your country experience its own problems. Why do you keep supporting and helping to Georgia? Uh, the United States considers Georgia a very important strategic partner, but not because we look at Georgia through the lens of Russia. We look at Georgia as our strategic partner because yes, it is in a very important geographic location, but more importantly, because we share core values with the Georgian people. We share a love for democracy and freedom, and we want to support Georgia on its path of becoming part of the community of Euro-Atlantic democratic nations. And we remain very committed to Georgia in this way. And that is the purpose of our support to Georgia. And we consider Georgia our steadfast partner as well uh, in shared, um, the accomplishment of shared goals on the international stage, 
that is why, for example, we attach such great value and appreciate so deeply the sacrifices of Georgian soldiers over many years, shoulder by shoulder with American and NATO forces in the Resolute Support Mission in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and peacekeeping missions in Kosovo before that. Uh, Georgia is a very important partner despite its small size, and we uh, remain deeply committed to our relationship. You just mentioned the NATO training, and of course I cannot ask about whether these kind of trainings and uh, relations in military sphere between Georgia and the United States are targeted against Russia again. Uh, no. Uh, we have various forms of military security cooperation with Georgia that have been going on for many years. Uh, I mentioned the Resolute Support Mission in Afghanistan, and we have an ongoing and longstanding um, program, the Georgia Deployment Program, uh, through which we assist in the preparation of each Georgian battalion that deploys to Afghanistan, uh, and we deploy together with them. And that is contributing to uh, international security uh, cooperation uh, and stability on a scale beyond this immediate region. Uh, we also have security cooperation aimed at strengthening Georgia's ability to contribute to countering global threats. Uh, such as the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction or items that could be used to create weapons of mass destruction, uh, to help Georgia interdict uh, narcotics and other forms of contraband at its maritime borders and at its land borders, to help Georgia uh, prevent, respond to uh, global threats such as human trafficking, trafficking in persons. Um, these are all the kinds of things that require Georgia to have a communication capability and high level of interoperability uh, with NATO and allied and partner um, forces that operate in this larger region. We have a more recent program uh, with Georgia called the Georgia Defense Readiness Program. Uh, it uh, started in 2018, and that is helping Georgian battalions, the Georgian Defense uh, Force battalions, uh, train and prepare for territorial defense. And that is intended to enhance Georgia's ability uh, for its armed forces to also uh, carry out their core mission of defending Georgia uh, as well from any external threats. So could you please just tell me whether Georgia is a reliable partner for the United States and the region, because we hear lots of different kind of information in regard with polls, opinions, and uh, propaganda as well. Uh, do you see do, uh, United States, State Department, see Georgia as a reliable partner? And what are the major programs of the United States here, strategic, not short term, but long term? Mm -hmm. uh Yes, the United States considers Georgia a reliable partner. That's why I call Georgia our strategic partner in this region. Uh, and uh, again, it is a partnership that's rooted in shared values, including democracy. Uh, now, our long-term goals in Georgia, in terms of uh, both our diplomacy and our assistance, are aimed at Georgia's uh, sustainable economic growth and prosperity, uh, its um, democratic development and ability to provide services to its people uh, and to its ability to secure its own borders and contribute to international security. Uh, so um, I would say that a long-term goal we are focused on right now has to do with Georgia's democratic development. There have been some difficult developments in Georgia over the past 12 months. Um, that um, the United States has expressed concern about here and in Washington. Uh, but I can say that we are going to continue to stand by our Georgian partners to um, help in the conduct of free and fair elections, uh, to support the ongoing process of electoral reforms uh, that will help ensure uh, even more clean and fair elections in the future, and uh, to increase an environment of political pluralism in Georgia, uh, and uh, to uh, assist Georgia in, uh, as I mentioned before, 
uh, overcoming the, uh, the economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, through support to the agricultural sector, uh, to support to small and medium enterprises, uh, in support to economic empowerment of vulnerable populations, the economic empowerment of women, uh, the uh, economic development uh, and creation of jobs for communities living in vulnerable areas, such as uh, along the administrative boundary lines with the occupied territories and in minority regions. Um, and I think uh, it's also important to note, since we started by talking about public health, uh, that uh, we're not just responding to COVID-19, but we're continuing our uh, long-term and more uh, strategically oriented public health assistance. Georgia, as I mentioned, uh, has developed a public health care system that can take care of the needs of the people. Um, and we have now a more sophisticated partnership that's elevating uh, Georgia to operate at a higher public health level. For example, uh, through USAID, uh, we are helping to create a pediatric uh, cancer center where children in Georgia will be able to receive world-class cancer treatment right here instead of having to go outside of the country for it. Also through USCID, we're working with our Georgian partners to explore new treatments for tuberculosis. Uh, we are providing technical support to the Ministry of Health and Parliament's Committee on Health and social affairs to enable them to do their jobs more effectively. Through the centers, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we are implementing a program for the uh, elimination of hepatitis C, uh, which has Georgia on track to become possibly the first country in the world to eliminate that terrible disease. Uh, and we also have ongoing programs uh, to strengthen Georgia uh, as a country that is able to detect on a regional and a global basis and prevent uh, both animal and human diseases through networks uh, of labs to prevent uh, and detect and manage any future outbreak of infectious disease like the one we're facing now. I think it's very important what you just said and uh, even I didn't know about some programs and I'm sure that lots of people have no information about it and what was really important for me uh, is uh, like this program in regard with people who live on administration borders or occupation lines because they really suffer every day. Uh, thanks a lot for this interview. It was really interesting and I'm just very uh, disappointed that we didn't find those people working in their Lugo lab on biological weapon during this talk, but maybe <laughs> we will keep on searching and someday, I don't know, we'll see. You will not find that which does not exist. Uh, yeah, but... th that is my r big problem because I visited Luger Lab, I don't know how many times. And you, I was like, I hope that you maybe will say that I work there, I do this, but you didn't. I visited it myself and seen for myself what happens there. And uh, I can assure you and all of your listeners and viewers that there is nothing to fear. In fact, uh, we should all be grateful that the Luger Center was here for us uh, to help manage this pandemic and keep everyone safe. That the fact, and once again, thanks a lot to Mr. Pate Naza and Georgian Center for Disease Control. They did a great job. Absolutely, they did. They are truly heroes of our time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.